Hello guys, this is Dr. Bass. Welcome to my channel. Today we will talk about uh, bus bars and prismatic cells. So here is a 105 amp hour prismatic cell. This one is a F LFP, uh, LFP, LF105. And it has um, laser welded uh, studs on it. So these are M6 studs. And I see a lot of people questioning about the surface area here that is in contact when you clamp the bus bar with the nut here. Um, so I will try to answer that question and also uh, my own preference regarding the bus bar because these type of bus bars here, I hate these because this little bump here, they are making you to believe that if there is movement between the cells, this little pump here will take that and deform which is totally untrue <laughs> that is way too rigid for that and the, uh, one of the reasons why I don't like these is because also there's a oval hole here which reduce the surface area when you clamped with the nut on it and secondly um, this one um, I will give you an example right here so what you see here is that if I have these connected, let's say, this ter terminal to this terminal here with that kind of bus bar, if the cell are going to work a little bit in this way, like when they're inflating because, uh, you know, you, you have compression between the cells, but if there is some movement between these, the st mechanical stress will be immediately transferred to the bus bar, which is not good. So. You have to predict that if the cells are like, you know, expanding a little bit, they will like make a kind of a sandwich like that. So this bus bar will want to stay here very close and this one very close. So you will have a torsion on the bus bar, which is not good because you have a nut that is installed here that is also in torsion. So you don't want to have to untighten these. So that is very sensitive and you're carrying a few hundred amps to these terminals so that is very important to have a good contact resistance so my preference is using these because these are flexible so you see there's copper braid which is a tin copper braid here and these bars bars are quite flexible and you can bend these and you can contract these without any problem so these are available at different uh, width I will show you that with uh, these here. Wait a minute. So you will see the bus bars where they are. All right. So I've bought exactly uh, the 52 millimeter, 35 millimeter square, uh, but I bought for the M6. So the hole is different here. And there was no of these bus bar, none of these bus bar available for the distance between two of these cells like that. So the solution is to buy these, but to bend these. So this is exactly what I done. So what you can see here is that I can have some flex between the cells and it, and also some torsion, and it won't transfer the stress to the bus bars here. So that is in fact a very good way to not have any mechanical stresses to the electrical contact. Normally what is very important and I keep telling a lot of guys to never use the electrical bus bars as a structural element on a battery. Okay, so the battery should always have its own structural uh, stuff and the electrical stuff should be separated from that. That is very important So right now I will be using this power supply here, which is set as exactly 10 amp to carry some current Through the bus bar and I will measure the voltage drop here Okay, I will not use an internal resistance tester to do that because these are made mostly most of the time for AC current and will also have kind of a measurement of inductance and these things and I, I don't want to have that. So one very easy way is to just connect that the same way I have one hand <laughs> to connect that exactly the same way. Sorry, 
as they are connected normally and to use a multimeter here to measure the voltage drop just like that so I will measure exactly here and here just like where the bolt are clamping and I will measure exactly I'm in millivolt I have 0 0.32 millivolt at 10 amp which correspond exactly by calculation because resistance is equal to uh, 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 voltage divided by current so if you divide that by 10 you get exactly a resistance of 0 0.032 milliohm which is exactly the resistance I will get for this bus bar where the screw are exactly so now we'll measure exactly the same voltage drop on the battery and a good way to do that is you will take two of, two of these battery you connect these in series and you will carry the current because when you measure that's very important <laughs> so when you want to measure a very precise resistance you have to use the method uh, that is called kelvin measurement or four wire measurement which means that to measure the resistance you will have an external source of current that is calibrated and fixed and you will measure the voltage drop across that with another pair of wires that is the second pair of wire for four wire total and what I'm doing now is I'm using my own source and my own voltmeter and just doing the calculation that is very simple that is exactly what an internal resistance meter will do but I will do it with DC with pretty great equipment okay so right now I'm connecting a 10 amp source to recharge these battery so the current will go from this terminal to this one through the cell chemistry as well through this terminal and back to this one okay and by the way the Chinese are all I like a lot to put the positive terminal in black color that is totally American stuff haha <laughs> okay so I will connect this second probe here and as you can see I have exactly 10 amp and I will measure the voltage drop but to measure the contact resistance here just between the bus bar and the terminal of the cell which is exactly this little uh, washer here on top that is fixed and welded to this one I will measure the voltage drop exactly at this place right here and right here and I get exactly 0 0.39 millivolt okay so what does it mean I had 0 0.32 and now I have 0 0.39 which means that the uh, voltage drop across the total of the contact resistance I have which mean the contact resistance between this terminal and the bus bar and this terminal and the bus bar is 0 0.039 milliohm minus 0 0.032 milliohm which means I have 7 uh, well 0 0.07 milliohm total contact resistance or 0 0.0 35 milliohm per contact resistance because I had the total of two terminal so 0 0.032 milliohm contact resistance is very good for that kind of current for example a piece of wire of one foot of 10 gauge wire copper wire is exactly one milliohm to give you an example okay so one piece of one foot of 10 gauge wire in copper is exactly one milliohm so guys uh, with uh, all these kind of tests and uh, just quick measurement and information I hope it will guide you to better understand how to connect your prismatic cells together and how to measure the resistance of these contact so uh, Thank you again and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to have more information about batteries. That's a passion for me and I hope you appreciate it. See you next time. Bye-bye.